This man was drunk, dead drunk, when the Mexican cartel rained holy hell on his hideout. And as they whisked him away, a soldier would later recall that he turned and threatened him, saying, you have no idea who you're messing with. But what they didn't know was Santiago Meza Lopez was one of the most mysterious and important figures in the narcotics underworld. He was so important that just a few days after his capture, an armed faction of cartel hitmen tried and failed to break him out of his cell. Now, if you're wondering why cartel members would bother to break out a man who was dumb enough to get captured, well, it was because Santiago was the legendary El Bosolero, the stew maker, the man who mastered the art of making bodies disappear. To understand how a man like Santiago became El Bosolero, to understand what a stew maker is and why that role is so important to cartels, first we need some context, and that context comes from the event that followed. Going back in history, Santiago Meza Lopez, also known as El Bosolero, was the son of a poor couple in Sinaloa. He worked as a child in Guamchil in the manufacture of construction of bricks, a company that supported the family of nine children. In the mid-1990s, he traveled to Tijuana in search of better living conditions. According to him, his criminal career began when he discovered that his sister had been raped by members of a local criminal organization, so he joined the Tijuana cartel with the goal of assassinating rapists. From 2000 to 2009, he worked for the cartel, where he was in charge of dissolving his enemies with acid or caustic soda on various properties just outside of Tijuana. On January 22, 2009, he was captured by the military in Tijuana's Baja Seasons neighborhood, in a house where he had been partying for several days. Teodoro Garcia Cimental, his immediate boss, and 30 other people fled the scene. Talking about Tijuana Cartel is a Mexican drug trafficking organization based in Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico. The Ariano Felix family founded the cartel, which was once described as one of the biggest and most violent criminal groups in Mexico. The Tijuana Cartel was weakened in August 2006 when its leader Javier Ariano Felix was arrested on a boat off the coast of Baja California by the United States Coast Guard. In January 2007, Mexican army troops were sent to Tijuana in operation to restore order and root out corrupt police officers who were most likely cooperating with the Tijuana cartel. As a result of these efforts, the Tijuana cartel is now unable to project much power beyond its Tijuana headquarters. Despite this, the majority of the victims in Tijuana were white-collar entrepreneurs, and the kidnappers were putting too much heat on organized crime and disrupting the cartel's criminal enterprise and interest. Hundreds of thousands of people died in Mexico as a result of conflicts between rival drug cartels and clashes with authorities. Aside from the sheer number, the most disturbing aspect of these killings is how rival cartels continued to find increasingly gruesome ways of offing their victims in order to settle scores and exert control through fear. The cartels would dump their bodies into rivers, clog sewer systems, and hang them from bridges. It was an eyesore until one day the bodies came to a stop for the casual observer. From 1996 to the late 2000s, 30,000 people went missing due to cartel-related violence, and as the missing person cases piled up, authorities were confronted with a question. They had no idea where all the bodies were. Meza Lopez was the one who did this. Santiago began liquefying bodies for the Ariano brothers more than 12 years, but in 2008, El Tio had a major falling out with the organization and switched sides to the Sinaloa cartel. The master kidnapper began working for El Chapo, and he brought Santiago with him. Santiago was now the chief stew maker for the Sinaloa cartel. This meant he'd be stewing over his former colleagues' people he used to work for, and with it was a classic case of loyalty to the dollar and nothing else. He dismembered and dissolved the bodies of people kidnapped in acid by the Ariano, Felix, and Sinaloa cartels, the groups that historically controlled drug trafficking in that city. The Pozolero's job was to receive the bodies of his boss's enemies in his secret laboratory, where he had drums filled with caustic sodas and leave them in the substance until they were completely diluted. In exchange, he was paid $600 per body. Although his method may appear brutal, grotesque, and thus unorganized or on the fly, the truth was that Meza had his own recipe for the substance he used. It was well organized. The method gave him the nickname El Pozolero. 200 liter tub that was half filled with water, then emptied two sacks of caustic soda and finally dumped the chopped up bodies. The mixture remained on high heat for at least eight hours before fully boiling and disintegrating almost completely. Parts of the body that did not burn, such as teeth, nails, or small pieces of bones, he eventually threw into a wasteland, burned with gasoline, and buried. According to the state attorney general, Romel Moreno, Meza would be shown the photos to see if he recognizes any of his victims, and authorities are considering allowing the victim's relatives to meet with him. The relatives did not say whether they thought their missing relatives were involved in drug trafficking. However, Fernando Ortiguera, whose son vanished in February 2007, claimed that the majority of the 100 people vanished in eastern Tijuana, which is thought to be Garcia's stronghold. 
For nearly a decade, authorities had no idea who El Potelero was. Then in 2005, two kidnappers working for Adil were caught and questioned. They admitted to kidnapping and killing three people, before handing them over to the head of a cleanup crew named El Potelero. Their testimony and detailed descriptions of Santiago assisted the government in determining the stew maker's identity, and he became a high-priority target in several countries. He was eventually placed as FBI's number 20 most wanted man. Santiago, on the other hand, managed to evade the feds for four years until he made a mistake in 2009. Santiago, El Tio, and other members of the crew were partying in the Baja Seasons neighborhood with prostitutes while listening to loud music when someone in the area called the cops and revealed the identity of the loud neighbors. The Mexican army was immediately notified by the police. Before the soldiers could capture the squad, someone alerted El Tio, and he fled with 30 of his men. But Santiago was too drunk and too busy cooking seafood to notice his comrades fleeing. He was arrested in 2009. He confessed to investigators that he had liquefied over 300 victims, and when he was paraded in public, he sobbed, pleading with God for forgiveness and apologizing to the families of the victims he had stewed. The families of his victims revealed that Santiago had refused to cooperate with police and had refused to reveal the locations of the victims he liquefied. Simply put, he's refused to snitch. And then there was the matter of his claim that he had only liquefied 300 victims. That was obviously a lie, and the reason it was a lie was because of the location of the chicken coop. The most significant excavation to date occurred in 2017 in a house just outside city limits in an area known as the Chicken Coop. The event occurred eight years after Meza Lopez's arrest, opening a new door for families of Mexico's disappeared. Authorities had told families that DNA could not be extracted from organic remains, but in mid-August 2017, Fernando Oteguera and other family members discovered new graves in the chicken coop and extracted 250 kilos of bones and bone fragments. The chicken coop story begins in 1996, when Meza Lopez worked for the Ariano Felix Cartel, caring for horses and doing masonry work. The organization's leader, Efran Perez, and Jorge Aureliano Phoenix, El Macumba, invited him to see an experiment. They filled a drum with liters of water and other substances and asked Santiago Meza Lopez to drop a leg of beef. They advised him to leave it for two hours, which dissolved there. The first body was dissolved in a drum filled with 200 liters of water one night in 1996. They undressed him, took him inside, lit the gas stove, and left him there all night. In one statement, Lopez said they loaded the barrels into the pickup truck and drove them to the canyon to throw the human remains away and continued it for a long time. In 2012, Santiago Meza Lopez was sentenced to 10 years in prison for charges relating to organized crime. Despite the fact that liquefied remains are still being discovered every other month, and despite Santiago's refusal to deny the heinous crime, he was not charged with stewing the corpses. Many people are baffled as to why the delay occurred, but some have theories. The government has previously been linked to the cartel, and many believe that the corrupt officials within the government are protecting him. El Potelero is set to be released later this year. However, the victims' families will not accept his release. What will they do? How will they react? Only time will tell if Petolero will answer for the terrible crimes he has committed. But what are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments section down below.